Imagine soaring in the sky, peering down and seeing a large airport built on a massive artificial island floating serenely in the midst of the ocean. This may sound like science fiction, but floating airports are becoming a reality. With rising demand for air travel and a scarcity of land in coastal cities, engineers and architects are turning to this cutting-edge approach to build airports that can meet the needs of the 21st century. Welcome to Top Futuristic. Before we continue, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with our latest videos. Japan is a wonder of engineering, with skyscrapers constructed to survive strong earthquakes and trains that are almost always on time. The Tokyo Skytree, Akashi Keikyo Bridge, and Tokaido Shinkansen were all completed without a hitch. But not every engineering project in the land of the rising sun always goes as planned. The $20 billion Kansai International Airport could be one of Japan's largest engineering catastrophes. The Kansai Airport in Japan, which opened in 1994 and is located in Osaka Bay, is a one-of-a-kind and cutting-edge engineering marvel. However, due to its location on a landfill island, it has been sinking 2 to 4 centimeters per year. The airport's sinking has been blamed on a variety of issues, including the effect of climate change. Changing climate patterns have resulted in rising sea levels and an increased frequency of extreme weather events, such as typhoons, which can cause substantial damage to coastal infrastructure. The floating airport is sinking into Osaka Bay, despite $12 billion in efforts to save it. Here's a look at why the airport is sinking and what's being done to fix it. The interesting thing about Kansai International Airport is that it is designed to sink. It's simply sinking much faster than engineers predicted. One question remains, will the airport be built high enough above sea level to avoid major flooding? Only time will tell and thus far, only stopgap solutions are being employed to keep Kansas International Airport floating in Osaka Bay. Before we get into these steps, let's take a look at how Kansai International Airport was developed. Construction on the Kansas International Airport began in 1987. The project was originally estimated to cost $8 billion. However, the overall cost of building the airport has subsequently risen to $20 billion due to costly maintenance. Ironically, Japan's Ministry of Transportation chose to build the airport in Osaka Bay because putting the airport inland would have been too expensive. The ministry was unwilling to pay for the additional cost of relocating and compensating residents who would have to relocate to make way for a new airport. Moving manufacturing and enterprises would have cost a lot of money. Then there were the environmental concerns as well. If only they had the foresight to recognize how much more expensive a sinking airport would be they would have developed it inland. Before the first terminal and runway of the airport could be constructed, construction workers had to construct an artificial island. Land reclamation gained popularity in Japan after World War II, so it's not like creating land on top of water was a novel concept. The first construction crews placed sand on top of the clay seabed. The second step was to install 2.2 million vertical pipes, each with a diameter of 16 inches. After the pipes were driven into the seafloor, they were filled with moisture-absorbing sand. This was a critical step because reclaimed land is effectively a wet sponge. If the pipe didn't absorb water from the surrounding soil and seed, construction would be impossible. To support the weight of an airport terminal, a dense and dry foundation is necessary with the pipes removed and the sand drain method implemented. Crews could begin adding rock and soil to the sand layer. The rock and soil were hauled in from nearby mountain ranges. In total, 180 million cubic meters of rock and soil were added to the sand layer to protect the foundation. A seawall of 48,000 specially designed concrete tetrapods was built around the island. The seawall's perimeter was constructed with 69 massive steel chambers, and the tetrapods were subsequently installed in between these chambers. The seawall was built to defend the airport from waves and surges by dispersing the oncoming water. Without the seawall, the airport would be flooded by water from Osaka Bay. More soil was poured until the island reached 65 feet above sea level. Unfortunately, engineers should have built the island higher since they grossly miscalculated how much the 511-acre island would sink. After the island had been stabilized, construction workers began work on the terminal and runway. A three-kilometer bridge connecting the island to the economic development of Rinku Town was erected in 1990. The bridge connecting the airport to Osaka was not cheap. The construction cost around $1 billion. The first terminal opened in 1994 but financial issues rapidly surfaced. After the first terminal and runway were finished, the airport was heavily in debt. 
annual interest payments peaked at $560 million in the first few years of operation. Kansai International Airport's main terminal building was created by renowned Italian architect Renzo Piano. He was picked to work on the project because of his distinct vision, but his plans almost didn't come to completion. To save money, government officials sought to shorten the terminal, but Piano insisted on it being completed to the original specs. The 1.7-kilometer terminal is the world's longest, but it may look very different today if Piano had adjusted his designs at the last minute. Despite the fact that the first island sank much faster than expected, engineers believed they had the issue under control. In 2003, work on a second terminal in the runway began. The second island was built in the same manner as the first, but engineers altered their specifications because they knew it would sink just as much as the first. Government officials saw the development as important because tourism in Japan was growing at an exponential rate. Tokyo's Narita and Haneda airports were also very packed. In addition, the Ministry of Transportation wished to establish Kansai International Airport as a gateway of Asia. They didn't want to lose customers to Hong Kong and South Korean airports. So what's the deal with the airport sinking in the first place? The sinking was unavoidable. But engineers grossly miscalculated how quickly and deeply the airport's island would sink. Kansai International Airport has already sunk 38 feet since it opened, while engineers anticipated the first island would sink 19 to 25 feet when construction began. They used the low end of their estimates and paid the price. Engineers anticipated that the islands would settle evenly over 50 years and stabilize at 13 feet above sea level, which is the minimum elevation required to prevent serious flooding. However, by the year 2000, parts of Kansai Airport's first island had already sunk to just 13 feet above sea level, much sooner than engineers anticipated. Engineers have recently revised their calculations, predicting that the airports will sink 13 feet more and reach sea level by 2056. To prevent this from happening, more than $150 million has been invested to strengthen and raise the seawall surrounding the airport. Raising the seawall is not the only method experts have devised to prevent Kansai International Airport from sinking. Unfortunately, all of the other options are just temporary. 1999 was the year when everything began to go apart. The first island had already sunk 27 feet rather than the expected 19 feet, so engineers got to work to slow things down. They excavated the ground beneath the passenger terminal and installed a series of iron plates precisely beneath the hydraulic jacks and the 900-column foundation. The foundation columns were then gradually raised. This significantly slowed the sinking, but it came at an enormous cost. The cost of constructing Kansai International Airport could already exceed $15 billion, making it the most expensive civic project in history. Kansai International Airport is not likely to sink into Osaka Bay anytime soon, but the sinking is far from over. The hydraulic jacks beneath the airport must be adjusted every two years, and meters are now put on the columns to determine how much the airport is tilting. Electrical equipment kept underground at Terminal 1 will be relocated above ground to protect it away from water, lowering the risk of flooding. Kansai International Airport plan to invest approximately $911 million through 2025 to improve the main terminal in order to increase capacity at one of Japan's busiest airports. Kansai Airport has likewise established a 25% reduction in single-use plastics, as well as reusing and recycling as a goal. 60% of plastic packaging by 2022, demonstrating the company's commitment to sustainability. If the corrective measures don't hold and the airport starts to sink faster, people have to be abandoned and a new international airport will have to be built in the Kansai region. Climate change might be an even bigger threat to the airport, in 2018, the airport was hit by Typhoon Jibai. The typhoon was so severe that the airport had to pause operations after seawater surges inundated the island and runways were flooded and water reached up to the engines of some of the planes. Tokanzai International Airport has implemented a number of measures to stabilize the airport and keep it from sinking further. These efforts include raising the seawalls, reinforcing the island's foundations, elevating the runways and taxiways, relocating subterranean electrical infrastructure, and renovating airport facilities. These actions will ensure that the airport continues to operate efficiently and remains an essential hub for international air travel in the region. Although stabilizing efforts have significantly slowed the rate at which Kansai Airport is seeking, the airport's long-term viability remains an issue. 
Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you all next time.